Pranav? Pranav Shall we start? There? Yes, yeah. yes, Pranav. I think we should start. People will join, you know. We are yeah, because uh, it's already a little late uh, and apologies to everyone for this wow. delay. Uh, uh, in fact, uh, uh, well, funny enough, today uh, somehow the link didn't work first, then uh, internet went off, then third, my, my laptop conked off. So I'm using another laptop now. This is, this is, uh, you know, the relying reliance too much on the technology sometimes can be very dangerous. And today is a, this is what we have faced. But anyways, so. <clears throat> Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, uh, I'm Pranab and uh, your host for the session today. And I, on behalf of uh, Global Foundation and Chinar, would like to welcome all of you, especially our esteemed panelists who have taken out time for this uh, very, very special session today. Uh, as you all understand and know, you know, Environment education is considered to be one of the most, most powerful tools uh, when it comes to conservation. You know, conservation cannot really happen unless we educate and sensitize people. You know, many times we, you know, for a long time, we had that notion that actually conservation can happen in isolation, but that's not the case anymore. And we have very well realized that conservation can only happen in coexistence and in, 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 in in community participation and for that very need we need to uh, uh, sensitize people generate awareness among people so that people all can come together and make the change we want to see you know on this note i want to quote <coughs> baba Dhum, you know he when he came to uh, india in 1968 for an iucn session you know <coughs> sorry 50 years ago he said you know, uh, you will love what you, uh, you will, uh, sorry, 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 sorry for this, uh, this thing. I would like to exactly uh, read it out uh, from this uh, uh, very thing that I want to quote uh, to everyone. So at the end, we will all conserve only what we love and we will love only what we understand and we will understand only what we taught, we are taught. So this is what that is the very reason we need education and especially when it comes to environment education this is the very need of the hour although environment and education existed in india for a quite a long time it's been decades ah, not come online we just started uh, yeah, but, uh, however we still have a long way to go and uh, and especially in situations like this uh, covid like situations or any other disaster we need to have a very different kind of uh, 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 you know uh, tactic altogether to be able to deliver and continue on to generate awareness among people uh, so to be able to discuss uh, this very interesting issue today how to deliver ed environment education during times of disaster and pandemic like situation we have a very very powerful panelist today uh, and uh, and uh, and from a very wide ranging academic and uh, development sector experience so we have with us uh, starting with dr ambuj who is a, is a senior environmentalist and he works uh, as a
Chief Executive Officer of Movius Foundation based in Delhi. We have Ranjana Sekia Ji. Ranjana Sekia is an eminent environment educationist and has had uh, multiple roles across uh, academia and uh, development sector. Also happened to be my uh, former senior colleague and the boss in Terry. And uh, then we have uh, Dr. Raju Kasambe. Uh, he is the head of education and assistant director with uh, Conservation Education Center at BNHS Mumbai, a pioneering uh, uh, organization. Then we have a very, very bright and young colleague. Uh, she was also happened to be my colleague in some point of time. And I have actually known her for a long time when she was doing her master's in Terry University and then was also uh, working alongside Yale University for her um, master's dissertation. So welcome, Supriya, Supriya Gulati. Thank so, you, brother. Uh, so with this note, I welcome all of you once again. And thank you from the bottom of my heart for taking out time for this session. And now I would like to hand this over to hand the floor over to Dr. Pradeep Mehta. Uh, in fact, I, I must also share a few lines about uh, our co-host and co-moderator for this session, Dr. Pradeep Mehta. He's an expert on forest issues and has done an enormous amount of work in the uh, Indian Himalayan region over the years. And uh, currently, he's also the chairman of uh, Chinar, a very well-known organization working in the central Himalayan region. Over to you, Dr. Pradeep. Thank you so much, Pranav. And uh, good afternoon and namaste, everyone. First of all, apologies for the technical problem. Uh, Bill Gates changed the link, so we were not aware about the new link. Uh, so yeah, but still, I think people are able to join. We had almost 160 registration for this uh, web dialogue. So we hope that at least 50% will join by the end of this uh, web dialogue. But at the same time, this web dialogue is being recorded. It is also being live streamed on uh, Facebook. Uh, we have shared the link on uh, the on the chat box. If anyone would like to share with other colleagues or on their Facebook page, you can surely do that. Uh, so before starting, uh, we, I will just share the ground rules for the participants and the ground rules for our uh, panelists as well. Uh, so I'll start with the ground rules for our participants. Uh, please mute your mic and or switch off your uh, video so we get a good bandwidth. So everyone will be able to, you know, get a good uh, connection as well and less data will be utilized. At the same time, you can post your questions on the chat box and later we will uh, be having a question and answer session where we will take up your question. So uh, for each session, please post your questions on the chat box. And uh, as I mentioned, we are recording it and we will take pictures as well uh, of the of this. And if you have any objection, do let us know. And ground rules for our speakers, we uh, each speaker will be given uh, 15 minutes each at the start. So after 12 minutes, I will ring the bell just to indicate that you have three minutes more to you know wind up your uh, talk and after 14 minutes i'll ring another bell just to let you know that there is one minute left just to complete and give the final message and after the first round then there will be a panel discussion where pranav will be asking uh, one or two question to each panelist based on the questions that we have got got in uh, the registration uh, forms and then finally we will take the question and answer session and then we will uh, wind up the program. So we are already 15 minutes uh, late, uh, 20 minutes late. So let's see, uh, you know, we will try to complete it by uh, 520. Uh, so we'll start with our first speaker directly. And as Pranav already introduced briefly, but I would like to give a more detailed uh, bio data of our uh, uh, panelists. So Dr. Ram Bhuj, an environmental profession and trained ecologist, Dr. Bhuj has hold positions of influence across nonprofit organizations and multilateral agencies. Before moving on to head the Mobius Foundation as the CEO, Dr. Bhuj has spent several years in the UNESCO Delhi office leading its natural science section. An expert on sacred forest groves of Northeast India, Dr. Bhuj has also spent over a decade leading environmental education programs at the Center for Environment Education, CEE, a well-known institution in India for environment education. He has to his credit many honors, awards, and recognitions, 
including the prestigious Science Academy Medal for Young Scientists by Mrs. Indra Gandhi, the then Prime Minister of India in 1984. So over to you. Uh, so your mic is muted. If you can unmute your mic, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, thank you, Pradeep, and uh, good afternoon to everyone, and particularly Pranav, who has been struggling with the technology. Uh, I think uh, it's these glitches uh, come very often, and uh, today I, I hope we are going to discuss a bit about this as well. And uh, Pradeep reminded me about the my days in Northeast, the sacred groups those forest ecosystems uh, which are really, really pristine in that area. And uh, uh, today's question is also about how to, in this COVID era, uh, are we going away from nature? So these are the tough, tough times, testing times, and very unprecedented. Uh, in fact, uh, when we began 2020, uh, this was touted as uh, the super year for environment. In fact, World Economic Forum uh, in the early, uh, I think in January itself, they said they identified top uh, five global risks and all five were environmental. Uh, but I think COVID has changed everything now. We do hear that uh, uh, there is much improvement in the environment. Uh, we could, because of the lockdowns, we could see clearer sky, cleaner water. Uh, Ministry of Environment Forest estimates that this year there will be close to 8% reduction in emissions. In fact, there is agreement uh, asks for around 6 to 7% per year to be have to reach. Uh, the target by 2030. Uh, question is of environment education. Uh, education as a whole has suffered the greatest disruption. Uh, as per the UNESCO report, there are close to one and a half billion students who are out of their campuses doing all kind of online learning, teaching, everything is happening. But over, I think almost we are six months now, and there is a internet fatigue, as we can, a lot of people are telling that there is a webinar fatigue as well. Uh, we all are facing that situation. And uh, this is really, really unprecedented. And in this scenario, uh, how this education we have to reshape or rebuild, you can say, when uh, learners are not able to attend the school or university campuses. All those new normals, what we call sustainability values uh, in Indian condition, namaste, yoga, social distancing, working from home, virtual offices and teaching learning spaces, all these are uh, the new normal, though, sustainability point of view, these are much welcome. And uh, everybody is uh, trying to adapt to this new reality. Textbooks, classrooms, they are becoming, are they becoming obsolete? Today, I think in the Times of India, you, you have followed, there was that around 1,000 schools are on sale. This is uh, such a, uh, disturbing situation. So education is most impacted and it is gracing the new world. A lot of positive things are happening and informal learning is happening and online coming together. New skills are uh, students and teachers both. They are learning new skills. Our education policy which was just announced uh, in on 29th July uh, this is also, uh, we had a, a webinar uh, a week back 
and their secretary education Mr. Amit Khare, uh, he spoke about all these uh, critical issues, how this new education policy which India has brought forward is going to uh, address that and particularly environment education also because 1986 when this education policy was brought, environment education was one of the most important aspects of that policy. Uh, in this uh, policy as well, there are things like uh, all those critical thinking, problem solving, decision making skills, uh, children learning uh, new skills uh, through internships, uh, even uh, going to nature uh, is one of the areas which has been uh, brought together in the new policy. Role of teacher is now, of course, it's just a guide and facilitator. And the students, more or less, they are pursuing their own path. One thing, technology is a great equalizer. And it is multiplier as well. Of course, there are problems related to technology in terms of access, uh, computers, tablets, and smartphones, which is not many uh, remote areas or, or those who cannot afford it's not inaccessible and of course we all are facing this problem of connectivity in spite of all these uh, positive things so actually this reminds me to the sustainability education or what we call it education for sustain sustainability or sustainable development esd and which is all about transformation. Like in this situation, COVID is bringing about a lot of transformation. Can uh, sustainability education bring about those desired transformations? That is the question. And that is why uh, this education EST for 2030 uh, was brought, of course you all know that we had a whole decade of education for sustainable development, 2005 to 14. Then a uh, global action program on ESD came, which ended last year. And now this uh, ESD for 2030 is there. There are basically three premises on which this, has, this is based on. Uh, awareness is not enough. This is one assumption or one of the main uh, pillars of the whole edifice on which this ESG 2030 is uh, built upon, that awareness is not enough, we must pay more attention to learners' transformation process. That is more important because we all are, we have a lot of awareness, but that is not that enough, that is not going to bring the change or the, what we call the transformation. The other thing is we have to pay more attention to deep structural causes of unsustainability. What are these causes? Why we behave unsustainably or we act either in our behavior or in our choices or even in our workplaces? And the other one is the technological future. And in this technological future, this whole COVID era, because this is being debated, uh, in the, how the, uh, this education is shaping up and emphasis on critical thinking is very much there and which I just mentioned. So if you just see the resolution which General Assembly uh, last year brought while adopting the ESD for 2030 is to build a more just and sustainable world to the achievement of the sustainable development goals and it places greater emphasis on contribution of learning content to the survival and prosperity of humanity. This is very important. In fact, uh, I, I don't think I am going to deliberate much on the sustainable development goals because we have paucity of time. But this is one mantra because all those sustainable development goals and how education can address those goals, can help in achieving those goals apart from the goal four which is all about education. And this ESD 2030 uh, is to ensure that learners, apart from acquiring knowledge and skills needed to promote sustainable development, uh, 
they must address issues related to lifestyles human rights gender equality promotion of culture of peace and non violence global citizenship this is very very important uh, in new education policy also global citizenship is emphasized and uh, appreciation of diversity and particularly cultural diversity and biological diversity and the link linkages so all these these are very very important and there are many uh, approaches to this that has been uh, brought forward uh, but i think one of the areas which is a multiple perspective approach to environment or sustainability education uh, in uh, teaching and learning to promote interdisciplinary and intercultural competencies this is very important because we have to go beyond the disciplinary boundaries in in order to solve the local or the global issues uh, which is much more relevant in today's world of work especially during corona so here again this uh, as i told in multiple perspective there is issues like technology devices and resources the content for part then quality of teaching learning they, that education how we can motivate students in this new scenario the passion and then again the hunger hunger to learn as i mentioned earlier that there is a fatigue of uh, being glued to the television or the tablet screens and how to keep the fire burning this passion which is in the new normal and finally the spirit of helping each other that is the global citizenship Help, connecting and helping with each other so last year many of you attended this icsc 2019 international conference on sustainability education we are pursuing that uh, with a net, network several programs uh, we had a teacher sustainability enrich program samvardhan there is my future my ys and champions of earth that we celebrated on 10th of this month along with climate reality in earth day network then there is this uh, hashtag learning never stops several several programs uh, which is based on local versus global that's are ongoing and i hope there is a let us not be gloomy of course everywhere there is a gloom because of rising number of covid cases but let us be positive and think that education can address this crisis as well as and find its way forward in new normal so this is what i want to share with you in brief thank you very much okay great sir thank you so much sir for you know starting this web dialogue with such a good deliberations you touched upon not only the issues the problems in the education sector how you know people have been disconnected with nature but at the same time you also uh, suggested some of the solutions and you also spoke about the role of education in sustainable development goals so stay with us we will also have a panel discussion after the first round and the question and answer session uh, we will move on to our, our next speaker and uh, our next speaker is uh, Srimati Ranjan Sekia a noted environmental educationist with a career spanning over 35 years across academia and development sector she is currently mentor emeritus with centurion uh, university odisha with a significant stint of working towards promoting environment education awareness in formal and informal education uh, system education system uh, mrs sekia has been credited of shaping the environment education and youth services division at its direct director at the energy and resource institute terry and author of several environmental books and publications mrs sekia is also a part of the coveted uh, education for sustainable development expert net founded by federal ministry of economic cooperation and development germany over to you ma'am thank you so much pradeep thank you uh, a very good afternoon to everybody and uh, it's uh, actually some of you i'm uh, so happy to see so many participants it is the passion for the topic and for the subject that i know brings you here at an odd time three o'clock on a saturday 
but thank you very much for being here and uh, i want to thank uh, wish a very good afternoon to dr ram bhoj who's been an old friend we've worked a lot together and uh, dr raju kasambe supriya gulati a very good afternoon to you thank you pranab and pradeep and thank you participants a good afternoon to all of you okay i had a presentation which pranab is supposed to put on the screen is he is he having some problem pranab i had sent him a presentation yeah is he there then can you go on to the next speaker because i would like to use my slides okay let me check where is pranav pranav yeah there yeah, it comes he's, he's yeah yeah <laughs> okay thank you pranav okay the topic was urgency of transforming knowledge and environment education into action um you know in these extraordinary times we do need some extraordinary action and uh, if you look around around the globe you have we have seen some extraordinary things happening can we have the next slide next please yes so um i'd like before talking about covid-19 and education also look at the world around us look how nature has got there have been some things good nature has got time to breathe yes but the air is slightly cleaner the water systems are better the forests are breathing you we can see i mean i live in gurgaon and i think a month after the lockdown i think i saw a clean blue sky for the first time where because i miss assam so much when i'm here where i always see a blue sky so there have been lot of plus points but this um pandemic has put us in a dizzy yes so the school the institute the student the learners all the educators all that that is happening all the experience that we are supposed to gain when we step out what is happening now it is actually all about questions questions and questions what are we going to do how are we going to do it when are we going to do it why are we going to do it and these questions persist even after 6 months it's a tough challenge but i think we have moved forward in some way and i think it has made us more stronger more resilient and um, so we now look at the new normal can i have the next slide please okay so uh, dr ramboj had already mentioned that more than 1.2 uh, billion students are out of the classroom out of which we do have a large percentage who are getting uh, uh, looking at uh, we are looking at e learning and uh, learn send them but um, this is becoming the new normal and teachers have begun adapting and adopting to new uh, ideas some teachers are having problem but this in their ways and methods now parents play a very important role now that the children are home they have become much more involved but let us please not forget that a very large group of learners are being left behind and these belong mainly to the rural to the mar marginalized sections who do not have access to online modes and technologies and we have to please remember this group and find ways i know that some uh, some states have uh, started opening up some are even doing door to door um, teaching i know that uh, somebody today i was attending a webinar this morning and uh, a principal in punjab mentioned that uh, in punjab uh, teachers are going from door to door in villages to teach students so there are some good things that are happening and i think now we have to push on that more because that group must not be left behind it's going to be a big 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 uh, detriment to education across the globe next okay so now we come to environment education i mean that's what we are here for to talk about environment education and we know that we are at a crossroad 
It is full of uncertainties. What are we going to do for go for blended, home, distant, hybrid, outdoor? Now the new uh, earlier people talked a lot about hybrid and home and blending home and learning and distant. But now we are also talking a lot of outdoors because it is now well known that if you keep your social distance and you go out, you are safer than in a group inside. So even within your own spaces, you know, teachers now have to think in a different manner, think out of the box, start looking at options which will help children learn and yet be in touch with nature. Next, please. So environment education, we know, is all about changing life changing experiences, which is now becoming a, it is a challenge to give them life changing experiences on ground, hands on. And it is also a tool to build resilience in the face of all these catastrophes that are happening. And let's also remember that this is not going to be the last of what we see because now these challenges will keep on coming. Yes, one pandemic, next another virus, next another mutation and things will keep going. So uh, we have to build our ready, we have to be in uh, readiness mode next time to be able to take on the challenge better. So yes, start. let's start looking out of the box. Let's start being more innovative in the way we are thinking, in the way we are doing things. Yes, looking at making a difference, learning, making changes, thinking out of the box. Children are sitting at home. So why not as education teachers, have online expeditions. I have an example later, which I will give you, which I picked up from one uh, group. Um, you know, visits a study tool, which can be online for children who have access. So teachers and educators, you can still do that. Hands-on activity in and around the house. You know, send questionnaires to your learners. Ask them to look around their own spaces they live in. There's a lot of learning there about the environment. Yes, learning, awareness, understanding. Now, let them look around at their neighborhood, at the community, you know, do simulation. I found this very interesting video game called The Flatten Island. It's from the Blackboard Academy in uh, the Caribbean islands. And uh, here they, are they have this video game which looks at how you can flatten the curve of Corona. So things like that. Then. Outdoor classrooms, of course, in our uh, bigger cities, it's a challenge, but the smaller towns, you know, in the Nordic countries, they have now allowing classes to happen outdoors because once you're sitting outside and sitting at a distance, you are safe. So uh, also in Scotland, so there's wider access to knowledge, encourage them to use it. Yes, and uh, encourage uh, them to do things more at home. There's a garden, there's, uh, there are balconies. In, if it's an apartment in the morning in the webinar, there was this uh, principal from Mumbai and she was saying their schools are eight story, nine stories. And she says it's such a challenge for us. And yet, you know, they have gardening and other things where children come touch, feel it's very important. Next. Okay, so in and around the house, like I just said, if you are an educator and if you want your children or your group, you are heading an NGO where you're working, look at how you can still keep them in engaged. You know, like I said, in the garden and their homes, you know, the trees, the plants, the insects would make a treasure hunt. Let them look into, say, under the uh, wash basin, what, where, what will they find there? Then, of course, look at indoor air pollution, energy, water, do the audits. These are things which are possible. They can do it. And uh, they at least have all in touch with the environment. Yes, and in the neighborhood and community, you know, the local parks, we are going out just to the uh, open area outside 
And uh, if you're near the sea, you can look at your beach, you can do energy checks, you can count the number of trees and plants and see what's happening in and around you. Yes, so doing quality check of whatever you have. And then once you give them the questionnaires, give them a platform where they can upload it, they can share it, then maybe have a group of maybe students in the same class or if you are working with groups of children out in the informal, non-formal sector, get them to upload it and then have a discussion online as to what their findings were. I'm sure it would excite them to find what is happening in and around them. Next. Yeah, so there are a lot of online learning platforms and tools. I think most of you are familiar with them. Most of them have sections which are, I have gone through a large number of them, which are free. So you can open them and a lot of them cover various environmental issues, talking about plants, about air, about energy. So try getting your uh, learners more excited, ask them to look into a particular uh, learning platform, get out information, share it with others. It helps. Next, please. OK, now I put two examples here. There's this uh, there was an online group project where the students got together with the, uh, the educator, put groups of students via a Google Doc. And these students created a field trip for themselves. They looked at a location which they could find online, but most of them chose locations which they were familiar with. You know, maybe a forest close by, maybe the river bank. Then, of course, they took this through the instructor and they went through the trip, completed it, made a short presentation. And then when they uploaded it, they watched each other's presentation and provided feedback. Yeah, the only minus point was that they, they did not have uh, somebody with a lot of knowledge who they could follow. So it actually empowered them to create, and it was an inversion of ex expertise. The next is a uh, UNEP and uh, TED-Ed project called Earth School. And uh, it is a coalition uh, between 30 collaborators, which also includes National Geographic, WWF, and UNESCO. And they have done made this um, web-based uh, project and provided free high quality content to the students, parents and teachers. And it's a 30 day program. So you can go through it. So therefore, there is a lot to do. I think the bell rang, but I just like to look at the last slide, which is post COVID-19. Next slide, please. You have two more minutes, so take your time. Yeah, the next slide is just conclusion. Yes, yes, yeah. Take your time, please. Yeah. So we need to accept that, as I mentioned earlier, that a similar situation can rise again. So we need to now look at what we are going to do, what will change, because we know that a lot of things will change. The new normal is not going to be what it is, what it was before March. It's going to be different after the pan pandemic. So we have to start adapting, building our resilience and our human skills also. You know, feel more compassion, more empathy. Maybe once we get back and uh, everything is again, nothing is going to be normal, but at least there's a um, vaccine and we are all feeling more, you know, these human touches make a lot of difference to um, environment education. And of course, there will have to be continuous um learning continuous change and we always will we will have to be ready for the unpredictable yeah thank you very much for giving me the time thank you so thank much you. uh yeah uh mrs sekia and uh, also you know the right thing that you mentioned that in the difficult times we need extraordinary actions and this uh COVID time has been a learning for us we have to be better prepared for our future. But at the same time, there have been some positive impacts on the environment which we have seen 
observed, like the blue sky you mentioned, there were reports that from Punjab, you could see the Himalayan range, which used to be, you know, seen uh, a few decades back. But at the same time, the air quality index of uh, Delhi was equal into Himalayan, uh, you know, hill stations. So all these, the, the, yeah, the, the, the water quality of Ganges became so clear. So all these changes, so these were the positive impact. But at the same time, you gave some, uh, you know, alternatives. And there are many education uh, uh, teachers here in this web dialogue. I think they will definitely take care of those uh, solutions which you have suggested, you know, teaching students outdoor, how to connect them. At the same time, though we are in this COVID situation, but we have so many opportunities to observe in and around our neighborhood. There's so much which we can do, observation of our flora, fauna, audits, energy audits, water audits, and all these things. So thank you so much. And we will hear more from you in the panel discussion and in the question answer round. So thank you, ma'am. Stay with us. We'll move on to our uh, next panelist, uh, Dr. Raju Kasambe, a well-known name in the field of environment education as well as uh, conservation, a renowned naturalist and conservationist. Dr. Kasambe is known for his work on birds and butterflies and has more than 100 publications on this subject to his credit. Dr. Kasambe is also the author of the popular ebook, 100 Common Birds in India. Dr. Kasambe is the head of education at Conservation Education Center of Bombay Natural History Society, which is also well known as BNHS in Mumbai. Center for uh, Conservation Education is a pioneering organization established in 1983 to raise environmental awareness among people at large. Prior to this, he has had some very interesting experience of managing the important bird area program at BNHS in an effort to identify and recognize key bird habitats of the country. So the screen is all yours. Over to you. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Dr. Pradeep. And uh, uh, shall I share? Uh, I'll share the presentation. So yeah, I think I can your yeah. Do you want me to do that, uh, Dr. Kasambe, or are you uh, happy to do it? I have it uh, ready with you. Oh, it's, it's, uh, I, I can share it. Okay, lovely. Okay, can you see it? Yes. Yes. Sorry, I need to make it full screen. So, uh, namaste and uh, good afternoon to uh, all the participants and of course the uh, other uh, experts, respected experts who are there with me for this web dialogue on environmental education in terms of COVID like pandemics and other uh, disasters in the world. Uh, my, uh, my presentation is related to my experience as a uh, manager of the Conservation Education Center in Mumbai. Of course, BNHS is not working only in Mumbai. We, we do have an Conservation Education Center in Delhi and uh, uh, in Nagpur. So, so they, they will be having very different experiences uh, in terms of a uh, uh, carrying out environmental education and educational related activities. So we, we not only conduct activities for the students, but also we conduct activities for the general citizens. And uh, we have we have a lot of things. Uh, I will uh, concentrate on or uh, deal more on uh, my own experience or the experience of my team uh, in the last uh, six months uh, in the co in the COVID uh, situation. So. So just just few words about what we do. So BNHS uh, started environmental education activities as uh, as early as 1920s, and this is the Conservation Education Center or CEC Mumbai we call. Uh, started in 1993. We have one in Asola Bhatti Wildlife Sanctuary in Delhi, and one in one at Rajbhavan in Nagpur. So the Rajbhavan Nagpur uh, especially works uh, for the Central Indian landscape. Uh, that means man-animal conflict. Uh, 
in tiger habitats so so they they have a very different set of activities compared to the activities which we conduct in delhi and mumbai because our audience is different and uh, we try to do a lot of outreach uh, to general citizens cater to general citizens and uh, also uh, reach out to students uh, in the uh, for the various strata of the society not only for the the students who can pay but are the but also for the underprivileged so for for my center the cec my activities generally we we can divide those activities into programs projects and uh, and courses so as you can see here the yeah projects we we try to get projects where we we can conduct educational activities free educational activities for underprivileged students then research and training then courses we conduct to raise funds so that so that the center becomes uh, self sustainable and of course all the courses are nothing but uh, providing environmental education to the uh, enthusiastic people to amateurs who, who may not have the qualification but wants to learn about nature uh, so so these are the courses we have like herpetology butterflies marine biology botany or ornithology that is birds and biodiversity conservation so all these courses we 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 conduct Uh, regularly as a part of our activities and we have programs these these programs are gen, uh, made for like any any citizen who wants to go go out in nature like nature camps then uh, trainings day, day tours and special events I, i'll talk about this in near few next few, few slides so the, uh, nature trails is something for which people love cc people love our place because we have got 33 acres of dense forest in in the middle of mumbai uh, which is which is nestled between film city and sanjay gandhi national park and we have the uh, we have all the biodiversity which is found in the sanjay gandhi national park including uh, seven eight leopards which we have camera trapped so the the joy of going going out cannot be really compensated with any any sort of uh, online activities which we are trying to conduct and uh, continue our environmental educational uh, work so we 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 used to have trails uh before uh, till march like butterfly festival breakfast with butterflies brunch with birds so we have got many innovative programs in which a lot of people participate and they and they enjoy every aspect of it because they that has got the small documentaries uh, uh, going out to nature like a, a trail actually seeing you know the, the things being done for example this natural color making workshop so there are a lot of things in which people physically participate and learn and experience things and enjoy it. and that's how we work so the so we work on these five pedagogical principles like engage people explore explain extend and then we also take feedback so that we can improve our programs so we we always have a solid foundation of our natural history and science where we conduct uh, any activity for the you know, students as well as for the general public so uh, uh, it happened on uh, like in march one day that uh, it was declared there is lockdown and uh, we really uh, went home with our laptops and we never came back i never met my team uh, since the lockdown started so what we did uh, after after few days uh, we started we started discussing on uh, phone calls and then found out some online forums on which we we started discussing about our strengths and uh, the sort we did a sort analysis of the center so we we found that we have we have a very young team by my team that are ready to innovate and we did lot of brainstorming sessions what are the weaknesses in co in covid if, if you want to do something what will be the weakness the weakness is we cannot conduct nature trails so i am talking about the basics how how we are running the center right now how we are conducting the environmental education and how we are reaching out to the general public to international audience as well as to to the students whom we were we were catering and whom we were not catering before march so so the weakness was that we, we cannot conduct nature trails and we there will be internet issues there and of course the fun factor won't be as as uh, as much as uh, it was uh, or it is when you you are there physically you cannot experience nature looking at the laptop or computer and uh, what are the opportunities there so we we are, we realize that we can break the barrier barrier means for example we were conducting trails for mumbai people or thane or just people nearby who can then uh, come in the morning and be there with us throughout the day and 
and participate in some activities. So we have the opportunity of reaching out to wider audience, not only for Mumbai, but we can go for uh, Pan India. Not only that, we went international. So, so what was the threat when COVID came? So the threat was clearly looming on us because we work for an NGO, one BNHS, which which uh, works solely on funding and uh, they are earning out of entry fees and uh, various programs. So I'm sure we are going to lose funding because nobody will give you funding unless you are reaching out to the students or actually conducting the environmental educational activities. And we won't get any fees and we won't get any um, fees, uh, registration fees or entry fees. So no income from visitors to the center, though we have 33 acres of beautiful, well-maintained forest and uh, I have to, we have to maintain a team of seven, nearly 17 people. So we, so, so we were discussing and we were ready to innovate and we had the adaptability and uh, we, we were ready to even experiment and learn about new media of, of how we can teach. So we decided to go online, started with free webinars, uh, started with free webinars and we decided that the outreach, or, uh, the, the, the environmental education, which we were providing to the school students before the lockdown, like, like last year, we, we reached out to around 19,000 students in Mumbai, Mumbai means Mumbai and uh, Thane and uh, Palgar and Raigad districts. So we decided that we let us start free webinars. If the lockdown continues, we will change the gears and we will we will uh, start with paid webinars and other things. So so we kept the point uh, that we decided that we will discuss la that later on, but let us start with free webinars. So with the free webinars, we reached out to nine, nearly 9,000 people actually uh, or you can say virtually attended our webinars. And uh, so when we started uh, webinars, so we had a question of which which online platform. Uh, many little platforms will allow you only 100 participants, only 40 minutes or only 50 minutes. So how to use, so what we, uh, so we decided to uh, have a subscription and also use YouTube and Facebook Live. So, so we can reach out to more people. So we started with three webinars and those were like, uh, very, very basic webinars like introduction to butterflies or uh, wild mammals of Mumbai and environment, nature, plants, marine fauna, nature conservation, virtual and also virtual tools. So, so which platform to use again? So there were a lot of, there are a lot of choices like Zoom and Google Meet, Microsoft Teams, Cisco Webex. So we decided to subscribe to Cisco Webex because it was cheaper and uh, time was unlimited and the number of participants also. We can take 1,000. Then we, uh, they, there are options like YouTube Live, Facebook Live, and Instagram Live. Of course, they have the free options also. But if you if you subscribe to one, you get some certain benefits, which are very 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 much essential uh, because we are, we are doing it professionally now. So we we did sessions on Instagram. In the, then we did uh, basics of bird watching, birds in agriculture, bird calls, owls of India, and these were attended by 500 people. Every time when the 500 uh, people were attending and even there were a few people waiting outside so that they can still attend the webinars. So the, there, there was no fatigue, uh, webinar fatigue at that time or laptop fatigue at that time. And people were like, uh, they, they, they were waiting for something in which they can participate and they participated in these free webinars. I will say they jumped on. When we had the capacity of accommodating 100 people, the webinars were full in uh, like 30 minutes or, or one hour. And people were saying, oh, it's already full. So we, we were looking for something and so we had to subscribe. And uh, we went ahead and not only for India, we also organized a three days um, workshop for international audience and, uh, and we got very good, so very good response from um, Sri Lanka, then uh, Nepal, Bhutan, Singapore, Philippines and Malaysia, all this. Um, ornithologists or birds, bird scientists from these countries participated in this uh, uh, workshop, three days workshop on Central Asian flyways and bird migration study techniques and uh, experts from BNHS uh, guided. So we continued our uh, things. The, the, there was one webinar by Joel Aston from UK for butterfly conservation. Okay, then what happened? The lockdown continued and now the, the problem was we, 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 we had to go, we had to organize things which for which we could earn money for the for the center and uh, make it make it sustainable. So we decided that we will have crash courses and we will have workshops which will be paid things and uh, we have online, we have long-term long courses. Already we have in CEC 
but we, we decided that we go online instead of uh, the field visits. So we, we, we uh, planned webinars by subject subject experts, which were for three days, seven days, 12 days, and we, we designed study material and we gave e certificates. Then came media, publicity, and uh, the, of course, how to get the money, money transfer thing. So we had to design, design entire communication thing for, for these, then flyers, then what, what to use, what's uh, Facebook and reach out to people and the target audience we wanted to, uh, we wanted to uh, aim at. And uh, we were very successful. Uh, we, we got admissions for basic course in ornithology and all the courses like introduction to birds, butterflies, plants, uh, work, the, the workshop on bird migration, the butterfly gardening, Three people minutes. by uh, register. So all these uh, certificate courses, uh, online courses only, we got, we got uh, admissions and for the introduction to birds course, we had to conduct actually two batches. So that, it was very successful. So the next threat was we, we are going to lose CSR funding and uh, the, we had one major project in which we uh, last year uh, we conducted uh, environmental education for students. So we dis we discussed uh, what can be done and what what we decided was so uh, something very interesting. So there was there were field visits for students. There were physical uh, physicality. Uh, we, our education officers went and conducted sessions in schools and uh, on environmental related themes like Swachh Bharat Abhiyan. It was Mumbai centric and had restricted geographical coverage. So what we 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 did. We went to the funding agency and we said, now there will be no field visits as there is uh, this pandemic. So the, we, we, we will design illustrated talks we, and uh, virtual nature trails and which we, which will be conducted via through webinars. Uh, we will have lectures in schools via webinars and not only in Maharashtra or Mumbai Thani, we will go pan India. So we will conduct sessions uh, throughout India. So no geographical barriers and the funding agency was somewhat happy. So what used to happen previously, now our environmental, uh, our education officer is, uh, has presented and she is taking feedback. So they, you can see this, everybody is having this small equipment that is known as water, water ID pads. So they have, just like you have seen in Kon uh, Banega So uh, the teacher asks questions to take feedback and the students answer. And when they are correct, you can see what, you can see the, so the, uh, the expressions on the faces of the kids. So that's, that's the joy of physically going to the school and giving a presentation and, uh, and really, really talking to them. So, so we, we, have, we talked to the funding agency that last year we have done only 10,000 students. We could go to the schools actually. And this year we will take, we will take the target to 15,000 students. And we will also attend the teachers as a part of the project. We will take feedback using various softwares, polling softwares or Google Forms, and we will make the session as interactive as possible using uh, uh, by using the chat, by by switching on the audios, videos, and it's it's really working, and uh, we are happy that we, we we are reaching out. So what is the, what is the reason? The funding agency uh, was happy with our with our, uh, our our point of view of these fifteen thousand students of the Pan India concept and use, use of webinars and we got the project. And what happened uh, to, till yesterday, we have already reached 2000 students and we already conducted webinars in, uh, I think 20 schools. And uh, we have conducted sessions for schools in Kerala, Karnataka, Odisha, and already we have 159 schools across India registered with us for, for sessions. And uh, what the topics are nothing but the Swachh Bharat Abhiyan, the uh, chapters from NCRT and Balbati syllabus of the schools. So we are teaching the environmental science, which is there in their schools, which is which is there in their syllabus. So the schools are uh, uh, very, very receptive. And we already have, uh, we still have schools registered from Assam, Andhra Pradesh, Rajasthan, Madhya Pradesh, Delhi and UP. To, to, for, for them, we still need to conduct the sessions and, and we, are, we are conducting. So it's, it's a long way and uh, we with lot and uh, we are conducting sessions in English, Hindi, Marathi, and we are now we we have got some volunteers from uh, the funding agency conducting sessions in the languages in in the state wherever they are staying. So so we will be going multilingual also. 
so the use of multimedia is helping us in making the presentations very very interesting and the students and the teachers are ask, asking for multiple sessions in the schools and different sessions for the same class we are using a lot of animated videos and the the presentations are heavily illustrated every slide has got beautiful pictures and illustrations to 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 make the point and of course because it has been made interactive uh, and the, there is a question answer session also in the end so students are also loving it because students uh, they they know that this teacher is not my 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 regular teacher from the school so they are they, they don't fear so they just come out and they ask many many questions so this is one thing which i wanted to uh, wanted to share how we are working but there are certain problems and uh, 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 I, just like we say there, there are some good things there are some some problems and the problem which we are realizing is that we are not able to reach out to the uh, aided schools or the underprivileged students which we were able to reach last year because because they don't have those android phones or laptops or computers in their families so we are trying to uh, find out the solutions and one solution which came out and which eventually the schools only found out is that they uh, we conduct the sessions in the evening it's like uh, after 5 30 so the parents when the parents come back from office or work might be the uh, there is more probability that the parents have some android phone and they can they can uh, connect to their kids and so if we have a session in the evening we get more attendance that is one more thing but if uh, uh, if it is in tribal area still we have we are in one particular area we have found in nashi district that out of 200 students only 12 or 14 students have android phones so those 12 or 14 they what they are trying to do is they are you know, trying to bring bring five or six students to their houses and they will be sitting there in front of a mobile and still trying to connect so th so that is one solution which which we have found and uh, of course poor connectivity is one more issue so there is one more solution coming out uh, for that and we will be sharing all our presentations to the school teachers and we will also be sharing uh, video recordings of our presentations on internet so that the teachers can uh, send the links to the students and the students can see those webinars whenever and wherever they can see it might be some sometimes they the students uh, have to walk four kilometers on a hillock where they get good internet connectivity they sit there and they, they attend the webinar that is what is happening and that shows that they want they really want to learn and that's why we we are we are teaching not only environmental science but also their syllabus so right. so, so there, there are some certain good things there are uh, certain things which are not so good but but we are, we are not going to lose heart and right. and uh, <laughs> yeah that is what i want to say <laughs> yeah thank you so much sir thank you uh, dr kasambe for that excellent presentation and also telling us about bnhs uh, the the way bnhs works and uh, the model of bnhs you know the five e's engage explore explain uh, extend and evaluate and also like the previous speaker uh, srimati sekia mentioned that you know uh, we have to think out of the box and you have given the example how you know out of the box bnhs came up with these programs doing them online you know, when you can't do nature trails, you did online free webinars for the students. And then you started with the online courses and how also you explored the funding opportunities and how you got fundings for uh, environmental education. So it was, I think, excellent, uh, you know, to know how, you know, you. as we say, change is difficult, but change is necessary. So you have uh, demonstrated what can be done in this difficult time. And I think these are some of the models that uh, our participants can replicate in the day-to-day -day life uh, of those who are from the education, uh, you know, institutions, also from different NGOs. So thank you so much, sir. We'll hear Thanks. more from you. Yeah. Thanks. And Thanks. moving on to our, our uh, uh, the fourth panelist, uh, Srimati Supriya Gulati. Uh, Ms. Gulati is a sustainability and education professional with over 10 years of experience in the development sector. Ms. Supriya now supports social responsibility and partnership functions at Env Eco, Environment Eco Logic, a sustainability focused think tank working towards providing energy and sustainability solutions. A master's degree holder in natural resource management and education, Ms. Supriya has several years of experience in environmental education, 
while leading major multi-stakeholder programs on climate change and other pressing issues, including design and implementation of faculty development programs on education for sustainable development. Ms. Supriya, the screen is all yours. Over to you. Thank you, Mr. Pradeep. And firstly, I would like to thank you and uh, Pranap for having me here. I'm very honored to be on this panel uh, along with the speakers whom I have worked under their guidance. And it's always the prestigious thing to do. Uh, I would uh, talk about the emerging trends in environment education, and especially in the times of a pandemic like this and disasters. Uh, from last few years, we have seen uh, the nature of disasters have, they're not only natural, they're also a lot of man-made disasters that we are also experiencing. Uh, so when we look at emerging trends, we also have to look at first how uh, environment education came into being and how it has grown over the years. Uh, when we talk about environment education, it was always there. Uh, always there in the terms of the concepts that children were studying at school. They will learn about things around us, uh, ecology, culture, how societies function. Everything was always part of our education system. It was never a, a, a separate thing. The way we know environment education and education for sustainability now is what followed from these deliberations at the international levels as changes in the climate became more significantly noticed. What happened then was environment education became more of a measure to control the damage done to our environment. So the focus was more on the issue that needs to check rather than the actor. Uh, so what happened, what's happening was water needs to be clean and conserved. Energy needs to be conserved and used in, a, in an efficient manner. Emissions need control. Consumptions need to be controlled. Waste needs to be managed. Biodiversity needs to be protected and conserved. It was all about things which are going bad, which are not working out properly. And the cause, the people must start acting now. Now, uh, there were different levels at which environment education was taken to, at the level of children, uh, young adults, and then adults. But mainly at the level of school and the college education. So there were children and our teenagers. Now, these youth who have not even experienced these changes happening, uh, they now were pressurized to act. And there was a lot of disconnect. There was a lot of disconnect, and they couldn't understand on why should they be doing this? What is their responsibility? Why not people who have already caused this? Right. So slowly, uh, educators who are working on this sector, they realized this. And these factors were brought into the environment education. And that's why it also moved on to education for sustainability uh, and education for sustainable development, where a lot of interconnected factors were brought in, as well as the actor, which is uh, the people, the youth were brought in. So uh, the factors that influence real change, such as values, behaviors, attitudes, were also brought in and programs were designed around strengthening these aspects uh, in an individual and bring about a change which is sustainable in itself. Now the current situation is a very different situation and for majority of people it is a very difficult situation. Individuals are lost in their own world and so the approaches that have been used uh, for environment education or in education for sustainability till now may not work now and in the near future because the human mind is not working in the same way as it was before right so i am always intrigued by how a human mind works in different situations what is the psychology that goes in a in a mind uh, whenever there is a problem situation okay so you know in a pandemic we have to see in a pandemic or any disaster it's a problem situation but let's see first in a very in a very simple example on how an individual would respond or behave in a problem situation. And I will explain this with a very simple analogy. Let's assume a child and a teenager and their mother are sitting in a balcony. They're reading books. They're doing their homework. Uh, the teenager and the mother also have their mobile phones with them. And there are clothes spread out uh, for drying. Suddenly, it starts pouring. Now, it's a problem. Uh, it starts pouring. 
Now, how will each of these three individual react? How would a child respond? The child would instantly start enjoying the rain. The child would be least bothered about the notebooks and other things around. Those aspects don't matter to them. They are feeling beings. They're always feeling things around them. And that's why uh, they're very connected to what is happening in their immediate surrounding. Now, how would a teenager respond in this situation? They'll first uh, take care of their mobile and the books. That has to go in. And then they'll become more conscious of that feeling of brain, that pleasant situation. Here, it's a pleasant situation. Now, if you look at the mother who is with them, uh, the mother would be concerned about the children being safe. Go inside. You, we don't want you to get wet. Then they'll take care of the mobiles and the books alongside. And then they'll also, she'll also be considered about the clothes which are drying out. So uh, she'll move them inside. They'll, she'll spread them inside so that they uh, continue to dry. And then she'll become more conscious of the, the rain, that, that feeling that rain brings in. right? So until these important things are taken care of, an adult would not be able to feel or be uh, present in the situation. Now, here we're talking about, uh, you know, as Pranav said, we will only protect and conserve what we love. Right Now, in a, in a situation where there's a disaster, a lot of our personal needs are compromised. Our physical safety of ourselves and family takes precedence. Emotional security uh, takes precedence. Uh, important life supporting aspects such as food, home, and nowadays, because we're so dependent on our gadgets, technology, internet, electricity, they are very important for us at the moment. They are the prime factors that we take care of. Uh, people are uh, facing uh, salary cut downs. So there's so much lost in their own world. And whenever there is a problem situation, and uh, self takes precedence over others. And also, you know, I'll share another example. So when I was expecting way back in 2015, there was a major earth, earthquake when I was in my seventh month of pregnancy. And it was not stopping. It was the, the land was constantly moving. Everyone said we have to go down. And from the fifth floor uh, of my apartment, I had started to walk uh, down, climb down the stairs slowly uh, with my parents. And there was a woman which came from behind. A lot of people were going down the stairs. And there was a woman who came from behind and said, move fast. And she pushed me and she so that she can make way. So people are not able to uh, feel and be present uh, in the moment till their own safety is ensured. And that is what we need to also consider very importantly now. Right, so we are in a problem situation. So what happens is I'll show you this very simple diagram, right? In a problem situation, we focus so much on the self. And then once we have our self needs met, self also comprise of the physical, the emotional needs, and the social needs as well. Uh, and then we come to our friends and family, which are the most important beings and other material important aspects. Then only we are able to reach to our community and the environment. Uh, unless we reach, uh, unless we are able to satisfy our needs for self security and family security, we'll not be able to think about the community or the environment, right? Now, if we see this situation, what would work uh, for environment education, uh, you know, to be more effective, right? Uh, one thing is very clear. Uh, only thinking, feeling, and doing beings create the most sustainable change. We need to create an environment. We need to give the, our uh, youth a situation, uh, simulations, where they are able to think, feel, and do at the same time. As Ranjana also highlighted, and as Dr. Raju also highlighted, formative experiences are very important for children at the moment, for adults as well. And these formative experiences can be guided uh, and done in a manner that they utilize the resources which are within their homes and the nearby areas, which does not also compromise the safety of the home. For example, if, if a teacher is doing a class, is taking a class about uh, things, uh, let's say shapes or about plants. So there are so many things that can be done and let the children move around. Children need to move around. They have to do something. They just can't see and listen. In order to feel things, they need to touch them. They need to move around. 
So let them move around. Activities needs to be designed in a way they, which involve uh, them to move around and play with things around them. Personal well-being. So in, in near future, any environmental education program which focus on the personal well-being will take precedence, of course, because that is what gives a lot of security to an individual. Uh, anything that uh, is a combination of, uh, let's say, let's say, where their mental well-being is supported, uh, their emotional well-being is supported, their physical well-being is supported, and alongside use that uh, in a way to promote action, that will take precedence. Real life stories, right? We are social beings. We relate to uh, real stories, real people very quickly. So what has happened, uh, you know, with Greta Thunberg? Why she has taken that, uh, she's got that advantage now. Real life stories, real success, very simple model that she did. And people started connected to her instantly. There was an instant feeling that was happening. And they felt that this is something very easy to do. and. Uh, at the same time, they're learning a lot of things. Uh, skills. So any program, uh, you know, in the near future, now that we are in our uh, own uh, home boundaries, we are compromised on how we are going to develop the skills of these individuals. So any program that focus on building skills of these students, uh, the 21st century skills, there could be a lot of things that can be done. For example, data coding is becoming very popular with children these days. Now, if that data coding uh, learning can uh, help them create certain technologies or innovations which are online uh, to work around the different aspects of environment, that kind of programs is what we need uh, in the future. So something that focuses on their skills. Passion, very important. Uh, so when uh, we tap into the passion of these young individuals, they not only learn a lot of new things, they find uh, that it's easier to contribute to a purpose which is outside their being. And they they are able to connect to them. So, uh, so it, it's not a burden on them. They have to learn something. Then they have to act on something because their school wants them to do or this competition wants them to do. But then they'll start connecting to this factor. So when they're dancing, when they're uh, music, culinary skills, you know, uh, or art, gardening, photography, uh, animations. A lot of uh, children are interested in nowadays, a lot of these online like animations, you know, video making. Uh, so when we start tapping into the passion of uh, these youth and connected to a purpose, it is very easy for them to feel, uh, you know, that the need to contribute to that purpose. And they're able to do it very effortlessly. And when that that effort is, uh, um, uh, when that effort is uh, uh, appreciated and encouraged, especially with social media, again, very popular uh, medium to tap in our youth. So when it is, uh, uh, publicized through social media, when it is appreciated on social media, that becomes a, a way of sharing their talent with them. So when they share the talent, uh, it, it's also they're spreading a lot of learning outside. Games, as Ranjana also highlighted, the online games and online learning, which can be followed up by an action-based task. That is very important. So only games will not suffice. Anything, when you finish up the game, it has to be followed up by an action-based task. And another important uh, kind of trend that will take up now is any kind of alternative education uh, systems, the unacademy concept, where you unlearn things in a way and you relearn certain things. So a lot of uh, there are a lot of uh, these uh, organizations who are now focusing on uh, skills uh, and aspects which are not looked into uh, at a, in a school system where a lot of things you know something as simple as energy medicine how to heal yourself it is very important for any individual to be in in a stable situation at this manner so only a stable being will be able to work efficiently and feel for others and feel for their environment as well so now to maintain that stability uh when, when they learn about how to ensure their physical stability, how to ensure their emotional stability, uh, 
they are able to perform better. So a lot of uh, new things are coming up. You know, so let's say energy medicine, self healing, uh, you know, uh, fitness. So these things really attract our youth. And if we can integrate our, uh, you know, concepts of sustainability with these aspects, it becomes very easy. And this is something which can pick up very, very fast now. That should be the way for environment uh, education now. Uh, collaborative projects. So I'll, I'll wind up with, you know, three things that would work in the near future. Any, any kind of education which is tapping into the passion of these individuals. Uh, any kind of edu, uh, you know, uh, programs, uh, education for sustainability programs, which also help a child, uh, an adult build their career, uh, will be very useful. And skills, when we tap into skills, they feel very connected. And most importantly, uh, now we are in a situation where one organization cannot uh, suffice for all these needs. There are, we must bring uh, there has to be collaboration among different organizations, corporates, and NGOs, educational institutions to provide these kind of environment to our young uh, people so that they're able to uh, uh, maintain their own uh, their emotional stability and then go ahead uh, and contribute to a purpose like uh, sustainability as well. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Supriya, uh, you know, for your uh, talk. And I think uh, you rightly mentioned that uh, we are more focusing on, you know, the damage that had been caused. We are more focusing on how to correct that. Earlier, we were more, you know, uh, environmental education was more for learning and all. But now we are just pushing our kids to, you know, do the, the repair work, the damage that the older generation has done. But at the same time, you mentioned that how we need to connect our youth to environmental education by, you know, giving them guided, facilitated program, make their hands dirty, you know, just to involve uh, into these activities. And there are so many things that we can actually do, uh, you know, uh, like uh, the, there is animation, there is gardening, there is artwork and, and use of, you know, new technologies how to connect, like you also mentioned about the data coding for various aspects of environment, which can be used because uh, the youths are more associated and they are more uh, uh, technology savvy and all. Uh, but at the same time, you gave some, uh, you know, uh, real ex examples. And you also told that the children should, uh, you know, be given real lifetime examples when you have to teach them environmental education. And uh, the three things that education tapping into youth's passion, career, and skills, I think, which is very important because most of the time we just say, okay, environmental education, it, it has to be compulsory for everyone. But no one thinks that, you know, these kind of skills can also give you career opportunities, you know, in your future. And most of the time people are mainly going for engineering, management, medical, and all these things. But there are only few people, a uh, few students who think of environment sector as their career. And there is, this is a huge gap between, you know, say the, in uh, the environment uh, or the green skilling uh, 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 sector where we lack, you know, good quality people because people don't consider it as a career prospect. So thank you so much. And now we will move on to our panel discussion and over to you, Pranav, to facilitate it. Thank you, uh, Pradeep. And thanks to all our uh, panelists. Uh, it has in, indeed been a very, very interesting uh, perspective and uh, discussion so far, uh, especially the kind of uh, views that are being thrown in. And, and, and not only just perspective, but experience, real life, real life experience, uh, just like uh, Supriya or Dr. Kasambe uh, have shared from their experience, uh, especially uh, these last few months, how they have handled and managed the show. And then, like they say, that the show must go on. And especially if, uh, uh, education and uh, and environment education, these are very critical issues. I mean, we just, we just, I mean, world can stop for some reason, but the education must go on because without education and 
and and and which is a tool to influence people who influence them positively so on this note i would like to come to uh, uh, dr rambuj uh, with a very mm, in fact uh, we can call it a question because this is something i thought it's uh, very relevant and and we would, uh, our audience would be very interested to know uh, dr buj uh, you have been in the environment se sector for a long time i mean so what transformation have you witnessed over these years and you know, starting from your time in the, the center for environment education to movies foundation today and i am happy about this change that you have observed in the sector especially now at a time when and our environment is challenged the most because of our developmental needs over to you dr wood yes thanks pranav i think this is a a very interesting question but challenging as well because those who are in the system they hardly realize that how things are passing by and uh, but definitely there have been tremendous transformation uh, right from the early days of uh, awareness if you rallies and all those kind of things even uh, when this supreme court directive came to have environment education compulsory from early childhood to the higher education people were struggling how to make it happen but now i think there is a clear cut uh, thoughts of course several approaches are being practiced by many uh, not only the school systems and higher education but many civil society organizations so that is one the other thing is there is a huge transformation from environment education to education for sustainable development and of course even further because Uh, uh, when you become the esd is more development centric and it's more un system and the governmental system but if you talk about sustainability education it it has a, a, a like included in itself the an entire uh, spectrum of uh, almost everyone concerned with environment education so i think that is why most of the professionals they say that we have transform from environment education to education for sustainability right, right. hope means in a brief i could just articulate this much yeah But thank you so much no i think you have captured it well because you know now we are talking about you know earlier days it used to be very focused around just protecting the environment and uh, you know it was very nature centric but now as we have uh, seen the observe the change it is actually going towards sustainable development and as we have rightly said you know and this uh, uh, movement has already begun you know i remember the esd summit was organized by ce in 20 uh, uh, 20 24 i think uh, sorry uh, 2004 uh, for the first time yeah. so it's been a while i mean i uh, and uh, i think we are pro progressing in a way to go and especially uh and and i would like to uh, uh, now come to uh, uh, ranjana sekhya ji with a more pertinent question on the continuation of the same thing you know uh, uh ranjana ji uh, are you around yeah yes she she is muted oh yes lovely uh, okay yes, yes. yeah <laughs> uh, so uh, i would like to come to you with a very pertinent uh, issue of uh, transforming uh, the and and converting the knowledge that we gain through our education into action especially on a very different note altogether you know uh, 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 you know you know most of the time when you are talking to young people especially uh, aspiring environmental educationist or uh, a conservationist the first thing they would ask or first thing that comes to their mind is how to convince and influence people so this is a very very important you know uh, uh, environment education has done an enormous amount of work when when it comes to uh, generating awareness among people ac across uh, dimensions in india but we still have a long way to go in 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 finding that transformation i mean <clears throat> we still have some some gap when it comes to converting or transforming our knowledge into action and this is where this is this thing is very uh, critical and for especially for young people those who want to aspire to get into environment education to understand and value 
how they can convince and influence people. Over to you, Ranjana ji. And thank you, Pranab. Um, good question and interesting. And it's a continuation of what Dr. Rambhoj has already spoken about. You know how uh, EE has gradually moved to EST. Yeah, Education for Sustainable Development. Now, um, at this point in the in our uh, world today, uh, we have to tackle things in a more holistic manner. And to have an impact of what you're doing, when you go out to the field and you talk to people, if you're going to just talk about the environment standalone, you will not be able to have much success. But if you connect the environment, you know, like how the three pillars are of ESD. Yes, so you have environment, you have social, and you have economic. So if you if you connect all the three aspects, it has a much stronger impact on your target audience than if you just talked about the environment standalone. Okay, if you say that, okay, the environment is getting damaged, but that is going to have an impact on your child's health. And so for the parent that wakes them up, if you just say, you know, the forest, you're cutting forest wood, so it won't have much impact. But if you say you're burning it and then the smoke is impacting your kids, you know, so it's the connection with oh, the livelihood. Hmm. Yes, and that's why uh, this moving from EE to ESD has been it, it, it was noted that it was very essential, especially in our developing world. And I think this is where the impact happens. So if you are a field worker, you're out there. So this is what will make things work better. Thank you. Thank you, Ranjanaji. Uh, now I have my next uh, question for uh, Dr. Azu Kasambe. Uh, Dr. Kasambe, you, you have a uh, very interesting experience so far, especially uh, during last few months handling and offering courses, uh, even when uh, the physical education is, uh, I mean, physically education is not possible. Uh, but, you know, uh, the first thing Mike uh, comes to my mind supposed to happen so in this case and and we have also you 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 have also mentioned about the digital divide and you you, 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 you in fact already touched upon you know how those who had who didn't have access or not been very fortunate enough to be able to access um, uh, the the online uh, online learning they how they have been able to uh, take classes in the evening so uh, so that is one problem of it and the other problem that i want to uh, I would uh, like you to touch upon and perhaps you know give us some kind of throw some line or uh, light on it. You know, when it comes to efficacy of uh, delivering education and especially uh, offline and online and and uh, on uh, uh, in nature and outside nature, and have you have you done some kind of assessment? And do you think you know uh, if, even uh, now the education the way it is being delivered? Is it going to have same kind of impact on on children's mind and and uh, and and other target audience? Over to you, Doctor Prasambi. Yeah, uh, uh, thanks. Uh, uh, it is it is a it, uh, today we, we may not have the uh, very correct statistical answer to such sort of question, uh, like uh, like the impact of uh, environmental education. Uh, by physically taking them out in nature and uh, conducting the session online. Uh, so what we are doing and we were doing, we, when we were going to the schools and I'm physically conducting the sessions. So we conduct sessions in the schools. We do have nature trails. So we do a lot of differ, different things. We, every, in every group, we have different methodologies and we have different projects. So we do it uh, for every project. What, what, what we do is for every, every nature trail, every activity, we take feedback. So like we have got feedback for, from students, thousands of students, when we were taking them out for nature trail, they were participating in uh, school sessions, or they were just going out from out of the uh, just compound wall of the school to see the birds. Even we have sessions like that. 
uh, taking the students around their school so that they know the biodiversity what is the biodiversity around their campus so we have those sessions also so we have feedbacks and now we are doing the online sessions and in online session now we have found out how to get feedback so this is very little latest thing like out of uh, we have 2000 students we have covered till yesterday and might be uh, for 1000 students we could get the feedback for us because others uh, they, they can't feel it up because, because of the internet and other issues uh, they are not able to do the google form and try they, they may not be able to understand things so there, there are issues but we have feedbacks but this feedback will will not be uh, like it's it's not a very very scientific thing to compare two things because the the audience when we are doing it physical trails when we are visiting schools is very different because that i am telling i am saying the underprivileged students who don't have android phones or access to the technology they are losing out here and we are reaching out to english schools ncrt students and i will say to the to the richer classes who has got access to all these equipments and gadgets so there will be a difference that the, the, the whatever data comes out when we reach out to 15000 students i'm sure that this bias will be there this bias will always be there as the the audience is different but we will have the we will have the data and uh, what we are trying to understand it understand is of course i let me thank my team who uh, who has been there and i think some of them are there here in this uh, session today to listen to all the other experts about their experiences so let me thank them and uh, so what what we are trying to understand is how can we make it more effective and more realistic so that they so that they the kids enjoy and yesterday uh, by by luck we, we we did not know that two of the students in the session were a son a son and daughter of our own staff and uh, they were using their parents mobile phones they were saying ki madam ne bola hai ki ab uh, association hai and when they started they found ki the, the education officers uh, bnhs education officers are presenting and so they they updated us that my daughter is there my son is there and uh, so they also sat in front of the mobile phone and this what they said is like i also enjoyed the presentation the the animation movies two minute documentaries you showed it's very effective so so the message has to be very subtle we cannot take them to the forest and might be we will be able to do that very soon but uh, we, have, we have to continue the, the way we can the, we can make we have to make it more and more effective and find ways how we can make it more effective how we can reach out even to those underprivileged children who also deserve and who are in fact staying inside good natural habitats like forest where they are they are hunting the birds with a sling it needs to be adapted and we need we need to find ways and that is what where we are doing brainstorming right now because now we have found ways how to reach to the ncert students to the english schools uh, throughout india and other students also we have we need to find ways uh, thank you dr kasambe let's hope uh, this uh, virtual education system also is able to uh, create equal amount of impact the way it used to have uh, when we were doing physical i mean education in physical form and with this note i would like to now move on to uh, supriya gulati with a very interesting in continuation to what she shared on the the, uh, the importance of individual self and how they would re respond to a, a certain situation irrespective of various you know uh, external and internal factors so now uh, uh in fact uh, ranjana ji also touched upon a particular thing about convincing and influencing people you know i would like to continue the thread uh, to supriya as well uh, because of the kind of work that you have done uh, you know how in in this kind of situation when you we we are completely locked down and everything has become virtual and also top of that we already facing like uh, dr ambuj has also mentioned that about the fatigue that people are experiencing everybody every other person is talking about that fatigue they are having because of this virtual uh, world so in this situation how do you think that we can actually increase the sphere of influence when it comes to you know getting things done as far as uh, our uh, environment education is concerned concern over to you uh, supriya uh, 
Pranam, uh, what I see, uh, you know, with my experiences for um, of working with the very young children and uh, teenagers as well, specifically uh, for a long time, what I have seen what works with them is anything that fulfill their esteem needs, right? So in a, in a normal situation, they are not concerned about their, you know, uh, uh, physical safety and emotional stability. They're fine. And then they work a lot on, you know, they're very self-motivated. Generally, they're very self-motivated. The parents are involved. Uh, the teachers are involved. But when it comes to a, a difficult situation, uh, then that self-motivation goes really down. So anything that support, supports their own motivational levels and is the first thing, right? And there has to be very simple things that needs to be created. Uh, simple models, simple action-based models. Uh, again, I would quote Greta Thunberg here. Uh, very simple thing she started off. She started uh, skipping school for one day a week, right? And people started joining it. A very simple action-based model, which creates a ripple effect. And I, I'm very keen on starting off one thing now, you know. So what Greta does is you skip school, you, uh, you know, it's, it's more like an activist mode, okay? Uh, you go out and you tell people to uh, stand up in front of your governments and ask them what they're doing, right? So a lot of people are joining it. It, it gives a lot of uh, rush of energy in children, you know, when they're questioning uh, the scene. But now we also have to see, are they also equipped with enough knowledge to be able to take up that activism or advocacy? So why can't we dedicate a day when all organizations, all institutions come together and that day, for example, let's say, let's pick up a Tuesday or any other day where we only providing them learning opportunities, different learning opportunities about different aspects of environment, sustainability. Let that day become a source of learning. Let there be a lot of open courses available. Let there be a lot of open webinars available. And uh, you know, one place where you can uh, present these and let the children choose what they want to learn. So we have to provide them with a range of opportunities and give them very simple action-based tasks which creates a ripple effect one person to another let them do something from themselves to their parents to their siblings or someone which is to their next uh, level in in their community so as simple as that and that will keep up with their motivation that will keep their motivations high uh, and that's how it will work kind of. Are you there, Prana? I think he's having yeah. some tech. Yeah. yeah. Pranav, are you there? No. Okay, yes. I think, uh, you know, very well said, uh, Supriya. I think uh, we need to create, you know, simple models and models which have ripple effect, uh, you know, and providing learning opportunity. At the same time, we need to provide a range of opportunities to the youth so they can, uh, you know, select. And a very a good idea that you know, just said that let's pick up a day and all the environmental organizations and all the education which are into environment education, we should, you know, come up with something like, you know, webinars or some activities and let the children choose out of it, you know, what they want to learn and uh, whatever, you know, uh, uh, their passion is and it can definitely become their career opportunity in the future as well. So thank you so much. I think uh, by the time Pranav joins us, we have already completed uh, the panel discussion part. If there are any questions, you know, we can't see uh, much question. There was one question which have already been answered by Dr. Kasambe. So if there are any other questions, please uh, participants feel free to mute yourself, unmute yourself and uh, ask your question. Any questions, please. The floor is now open for questions and answer. And if you have your questions to any particular panelist, you can just name them and ask your question. And if it is a general question, we'll take the opinion of our panelists. Any questions? There are almost 43 people still there. 
please either you can type in the chat box or feel free to ask. Uh, Pradeep, I would like to pick up one question uh, from uh, the chat box. Uh, Please. Uh, Adamant is asking, is there any distance course for environmental course. studies? Yes. Uh, so, uh, Hanumant, uh, there are, you know, if you're looking at a structured course, so you'll have to check uh, the universities uh, which often provide uh, opportunities at different levels. So, but these are uh, slightly more technical in issue. Uh, when we come to sustainable development, if you look at the different UN websites and uh, universities at Terry University, uh, which is a specialized university in the area of environment and sustainability, uh, and uh, even Delhi University has uh, the Department of Environmental Studies. So they keep on offering uh, online learning programs now, uh, every now and then, where uh, these are certified three or four days uh, learning programs. Uh, you can also visit uh, Future Learn and Coursera, where there are very simple uh, uh, courses uh, to at least get acquainted with the concepts and uh, see whether you're interested in them. And then you can take it forward at a more formal level. Yes, I think, uh, you know, these are some of the platforms that Supriya just mentioned and Terry in India, and then uh, the NHS also, they provide some courses. Then Coursera, you will find a range of courses. I'm also posting uh, some learning courses on nature, which are free of cost. So you can also choose from there. So if you go online, you will find many courses, but uh, definitely you have to be more you know, disciplined and structured taking up these courses because we do register in these courses and after you know, two, three sessions, we just leave them. But here are the opportunities and even kids and any other educationalist or any adult can take up these questions. Yeah, thank you, Supriya, for answering that question. Any other question? Because this is an opportunity for everyone you know, to ask, we have uh, such a distinguished panel with us who have, you know, I think if we just sum up their, uh, you know, experience, it will be more than a century of experience, 100 years of experience sitting with us. So here's your opportunity. Any questions, please unmute yourself and ask your question. No, I think we are not getting any questions okay i think it's uh, saturday and i think ipl is also starting so people may be waiting for ipl as well <laughs> so pranav i think we have uh, done with the question answer round as well i think if you can just give the closing remark and uh, you know just wind up the uh, the web dialogue yeah yeah pranav yeah thank you yes. pradeep uh, i i uh... I gained uh, experience a bit of a uh, difficulty, technical glitch again, but now I'm back online. So thank you so very much once again. And uh, I would like to, uh, because uh, more or less you have covered in, in the individual sessions, you have largely covered uh, and summarized uh, what our esteemed speakers ha had to share. Uh, in fact, uh, this is a very interesting dialogue and it's a very timely thing uh, that I, I believe we have been able to organize. And thanks to the time, uh, 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 had been uh, given by our uh, speakers uh, because uh, the things are changing. And uh, like uh, Ranjana Ji has rightly said, you know, extraordinary times requires extraordinary efforts and and and, and means to be able to address this kind of situation. And uh, and uh, the way things are changing, the the way the difficulties that we are experiencing today. Uh, and especially uh, due to COVID and also uh, the topic of our session itself says, you know, other disasters are other future disasters. Obviously, we need some kind of preparedness, you know, to be able to deliver because, you know, environment education or education in general per se, it cannot, uh, like I said before, that, you know, show must go on. We can't just stop here. And, uh, and, 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 and the critical importance that we have, especially when we need to create awareness, create, you know, sensitize people about our uh, environmental problems uh, that we are facing today. Uh, we will have to find a way to be able to effectively deliver uh, a, 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 a 
powerful you know education or, or module environment module of etc so uh, so and 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 thankfully uh, our panelists have been able to uh, create a, a dialogue and and thrown in very valuable perspective in how this can continue how this can be equally effective as it was before during the normal times and uh, i think this is what we should uh, be uh, should be our takeaway for the session you know and uh, and with this note i would like to thank everyone again and all the participants uh,